they've been best friends for years and years and sometimes you do sort of morph into your close friends and your partners in life and you there are elements where you become very similar <laughs> they just live in their own world which is what i love about them and they're not really affected by a lot of things out in the big bad world they're just sort of like happy and blissful and they're living in this existence and they they dress the same their hair is kind of the same and they just come from like a very pure place and they're a little oblivious to a lot of things that are going around them too which is what makes them funny to me i actually very much relate to my character barb she's comfort in her routine comfort in her schedule and she is afraid to live when the trip comes about she's initially afraid and then her story takes an unexpected turn and she finds a part of herself that she didn't know was still there. Barb and Star are two of my favorite women, uh, even though they're fictional. If I could, I would, I would vacation with them. I would bring them on all my vacations. They've just been in this small town slash world their whole lives. And I think when they get there, they're like, I mean, Barb has never seen the ocean. And just like, it's, it's like going to another planet. They really are like aliens <laughs> going to another planet. And it's nice to see the world through, you know, fresh eyes and everything's so exciting to them. And they love their hotel room. Like everything's just comes from pure discovery and joy. Well, <laughs> Vista Del Mar is a, a resort for middle-agers, which is an underserved population. Vista Del Mar is an oasis for middle-aged people. So if you're anywhere between, I'd say, maybe 39 and 64, Vista Del Mar is the place for you. It's described that their uh, palm trees sway like Shakira, that there's fudge shops on every block. It is uh, just a, a hideaway if you're into uh, Jimmy Buffett. And who is it? In our dreams it exists, <laughs> which is why we wrote about it. It's kind of like spring break for the, the middle crowd. Vista Del Mar has its own particular charm. There's a lot of flamingos, there's a lot of pink and turquoise, and there's a lot of over suitcase sized cocktails. George makes this drink called the uh, Buried Treasure. It's the drink that a lot of people come to the Flamingo Nest for. It's a very popular drink. You know, it's made in this huge fish bowl type uh, glass, and it has a whole bunch of different ingredients that I can't tell you about right now. And in the treasure, there are some elements that I also can't tell you about, because if I tell you about them, I might have to kill you. But these elements will get you a little bit twisted and a little hazy at times, but yeah. <laughs> Writing with Annie, I've said this a million times, is like my most favorite thing to do in the world. We have the exact same sense of humor, like it's almost weird. <laughs> And we're, I don't know, we just, we collaborate very well and it's just, it's easy and we respect each other. And if she has a thought, I, it's just like, yes, let's try it because we, we just trust each other. We haven't done anything, you know, in a long time. We, we did a scene of Bridesmaids together, which was so fun. And she's, you know, she's my partner. It's just, I mean, and she makes me laugh more than anyone. I have more trouble in scenes with her. And sometimes it's just like looking at her and her wig and her costume, I was just like, oh my God, this is so ridiculous. What are we doing? For me, working with Kristen is a very natural, easy, fun process. Um, it's the best creative relationship, a aside from our friendship, which is, I mean, she's, um, obviously we're, she's one of my best friends. It's just my favorite thing to do. Annie and Kristen are everything that I wanted them to be and way, way more. We just had such a laugh, you know. I'm used to having a laugh on set and then, you know, reining it in between, you know, action and cut because there's drama to be told or whatever. And this is just, it's just this ongoing um, sort of ridiculousness, which is really fun. Kristen and Annie are, I couldn't have asked for better creative partners for my first feature film and the, the sort of trust they put in me empowered me to feel like, okay, I, I can do this. I can lead the charge of this. I think as Jamie Dornan said, thanks for captaining the craziest fucking ship in the ocean. <laughs> you know, so. Working with Kristen and Annie are like working with your sisters. They're just so funny and nice. Neither of them take themselves seriously. And that's what I love about both of them. I, we all like to have, have a good laugh and, and they definitely do that. 
Well, Talking Club is officially in session. Before we begin, I just want to thank Barb and Star for hosting tonight's Talking Club. I was really hoping to talk this week about horses. They don't like the people in my family. My horse is my family. I don't feel comfortable eating a banana. Oh, because it makes me feel dirty. I had a dream that I made love with a man on the Pringles can. Oh. What flavor Pringles was it? Plain. I like everything plain. <laughs> That's how I cheers with my horse. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Tomorrow's topic is clothing. I set myself apart with character socks. <gasps> Those look fun. Oh. I wish you'd dress me. I don't have time. magnet that I found that says flip-flop zone in wacky letters. I want to look at it. Oh, that's in the back from Poopy Cookie McNally's Trinket. Oh, it's right there, the yellow one. Oh, that's where I got my new phone case. It's like I'm listening to the ocean. I love it. 